Alright, hello citizens of the Nigelverse, it's Night here once again, and welcome back to the Labyrinth. So, uh, as always, I got some poetry for you guys, and, uh, and uh, I got some poems that I think you guys will really enjoy. They, uh, <clears throat> some interesting ones, on a little bit of fun, fine, uh, some stuff that makes you think, you know, the normal stuff, but uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Of course, this is your first episode of Not Exactly Stuff from the Labyrinth. Welcome, uh, but if not, welcome back. But without further ado, let's get right into it. And so this first poem, oh, and of course, I read three poems, three written for myself, as you can see here, and then uh, three from other poets, as you, or two, I should say, from other poets, as you can see from here, uh, right here. But uh, nevertheless, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, it's starting with this first poem. This poem is called Cement. <clears throat> I sometimes feel stuck, like standing in a pool of cement, my feet hardening. I want to move forward, but I can't. I don't want to be stuck, but I feel like I am, as the cement hardens around my feet, unable to move forward, but unable to go back. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt this way before, where you feel stuck, you feel like you can't really move forward, you feel like you're stuck in one place, you feel like like you're not making any progress, you're not going anywhere, or you want to go whole places with what you're doing, whatever it is, whether it be in your career life, in your personal life, in your romantic life even perhaps, uh, but you feel like you can't because as you feel like you want to move, you want to move forward, but you can't quite move, so you do like this, trying to move forward, but you can't do it because as you're stuck, and, and, um, and I think this really conveys that at um, to the point where you're unable to move forward but unable to go back. Meaning you can't go back, you can't go back to where you were, but you can't quite move forward. You try, try as you might, you can't quite move forward. And that is kind of the dilemma that and we find ourselves sometimes in, and I've definitely been there as well. So how do you overcome this dilemma? Us. Uh, uh, it can be solved in a number of ways, whether changing your environment, changing your in your mindset, normally that does is changing your mindset, but uh, yeah, uh, what do you quite do when you're stuck in that pool of cement? Uh, and um, you gotta figure that out, of course, for yourself. But uh, this next one's called Desire. <clears throat> if I finally received all that my heart desired, would I be satisfied or would I want more? Or so, oh, um. Well, this, uh, I feel like, is kind of a dilemma that some people find themselves in as well, where, or, you know, you want, you, or you want something, you want something in specific, you want this thing, say, oh, I want this thing, or, oh, I wish I had this thing, but then when you get it, then all of a sudden, you want more, and you're no longer satisfied with that thing, uh, and, uh, and, and some people are like that, where, or they don't appreciate what they have, have they instead and want more. And and admittedly, it is within a lot of us. But but uh, while oh, so, it's not necessarily a bad thing to want more, like, like to strive for more, like when you reach one goal, or to go for another. But uh, definitely, you don't take for granted what you have. Uh, but that's the question I asked there. Like, like, if I got everything my heart desired, if everything I wanted came true for me, happened for me, would I be satisfied with just that, or would I want to go for more? And that I think is what a lot of us have asked ourselves at one point or another. Or, or if we got everything we wanted, would we want more, or, or would we uh, be content and with it? Would we stop there? Would we strive for more? Would we be happy with what we have? Would we he's kind of punt off and say, like, ah, I don't want that anymore. I want, I want this stuff now. Oh, so kind of trying to answer that question, or at least explore it uh, within the confines of the poem. But this next one is called Pathways. <clears throat> I find myself on the crossroads of life often, staring down at two potential paths, two potential fates, one laid out for me by others, which would be fine, if not a bit tiresome after a while. But then one of freedom, of liberation, this is the harder path, but perhaps a beneficial one. Which one will I choose? Only time will tell. So this one I wrote a while ago, back in episode 47, which was way back when. But, but uh, kind of, uh, and, and if you who uh, are picking some familiar tones up from the poem, it is kind of inspired by I, uh, the Two Roads poem. Oh, uh, the road less taken, I should say. Uh, a, uh, the path not taken. 
name, the official name of it, uh, by Robert Frost, talking about how the two paths, as one, a path that's like straight and narrow, safe, safe to go down, you know that path, you're familiar with that path, uh, but the other one is a lot less, is a lot, I should say, more risky, you don't quite know what's there, you don't quite know what's going to be happening on the other side, so, oh, um, Oh, he took the road less traveled within that poem. Oh man, it made all the difference. And you may notice that I talk about that poem quite a bit on the channel. Well, uh, well and you, and, uh, you can tell I do really like the poem because it shows kind of how life is and, and kind of how it's conveyed here. Like, you could go down the safe path. You could go down the path that you're familiar with, and that'd be fine. And you know, oh, you know what to expect. You know what to do. Who, uh, one laid out by others, maybe your parents, uh, family, friends are saying, hey, hey, you know, do this, go down that path. And oftentimes, you know, oh, they're doing it out of the place of love. They... Have, uh, have, uh, especially when it comes to, like, parents and everything, like, they've been down that path, they've been down the good path, and they've been down the bad path, they say, you know, stick, stick with this path, stick with the good path, so, we'll always take that into account, but sometimes you wonder about that other path, if you kind of go off the beaten path, and go on the riskier path, 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 yeah, it may be risky, and yeah, you could falter, but what if it leads to something even greater, or, so, well, sometimes you have to take risk, uh, but, but that's the dilemma, do you play it safe, or do you take the risks uh, and I think that is what uh, this poem kind of uh, uh, what I try my best to convey within this poem but uh, this next one is called later and this is by Raymond Luxack and if I mispronounce the name I apologize this is for for Richard Ch Chenault uh, uh, there, but <clears throat> your voice translated me a lucid memory you videotaped my hands words no that's all gone to birds all gone to the birds what led you to sign to grasp your fluency made me gasp you turned deaf to others sneering your ears were so used to hearing translate me one more time i loved how we could rhyme death's a cruel interpreter nothing translates for later or so oh uh in dedicating this poem to richard uh raymond essentially talking about richard here and talking about having good memories and he's and and looking like and uh looking here or as though richard fought against the grain and uh went against hence the norm perhaps apps uh, what may be conveyed here or and um and learning from him so pretty much uh, uh, such a heartfelt poem talking about his uh late friend and or um or whichever the dynamic of the relationship is uh between in these two but uh but yeah talking about uh how talking about how uh, richard here talking about the type of person that he is and raymond reflecting on it hit and uh that he's gone and and oftentimes that does happen where when we lose a loved one and uh and we could focus on the negatives but we also try to focus on the good times the good memories we had of them and the good image we have we have of them uh, and of course uh, throughout my life i've lost plenty of loved ones I'm, as i'm sure or uh most if not all of you have as well but but uh holding on to those good memories of them and holding on to what made them special oh and <clears throat> and whenever you go to a funeral yes there's people sad of course but there's also people happy talking about the great memories the good times they had with that person so i'll oh, definitely hold on to those as well and of course there's they're no longer with us but in a way they kind of are still with us in our heart and our spirits uh but then this last one is called phenomenal woman and this is by maya angelou pretty women wonder where my secret lies i'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model's size but when i start to tell them they think i'm telling lies i say it's in the reach of my arms the span of my hips the stride of my step the curl of my lips i'm a woman phenomenally phenomenal me that's uh, a phenomenal woman that's me I walk into a room, just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellow stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them... Um, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal wo woman, that's me. Now you understand, just why my head's not bowed, I don't shout or jump about, or have to talk real loud. 
When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. So, oh, uh, a couple things of interest that uh, that uh, Maya Angelou does here, or uh, Maya Angelou, someone I also read a lot of poems of on, on the channel, I do. Uh, I do, of course, enjoy her poetry quite a bit. Uh, but, but, um, but an interesting, thing, uh, but an interesting dynamic how the poem is set up. Uh, talking about what other people say about, about her, or before her, uh, the I say, and then, and the latter part, it, her is talking about uh, herself and why she's a phenomenal woman. So, oh, I do. So I do like that dynamic. I like. Like uh, like how it's set up. It's kind of two halves. That's first what the other people say, and then what she says about herself. But, but um, the other thing it is uh, confident. It's uh, Maya Angelou, very confident within herself, very confident in her appearance, in how she is as a person, very confident within herself. Uh, another poem we've read with kind of a similar theme is "Homage to My Hips" by Lucille Clifton, and and kind and kind of getting uh, that similar vibes here. So. So, oh, uh, other, here's uh, what they say about her, 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 all positive, and then what she says about herself, also positive. So, oh, uh, really, he really, really feeling herself, you know, really feeling confident about herself, and really, um, really feeling good about herself, feeling great about herself, in fact, and and that's definitely how we have to be. We definitely have to have that confidence. I feel like a lot of people do lack confidence, and honestly, myself included, I'm I'm definitely no exception to that. But, uh, uh you know, walk with that confidence, as you see. Uh, you see Maya here walking with that confidence. She's walking within herself, walking with her purpose. She knows who she is. She knows what she brings. And that really translates to this poem. But uh, yeah, uh, that I think is going to do it for this episode. I, uh, well, I told you these, these some, are really solid, uh, really interesting poems this time. And, uh, as I feel like they are every time, but especially this time as well. But nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, turn on post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see through the drops. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on these poems and my uh, reading and analysis of them. Do you agree Do you agree or disagree with my analysis? Do you like, dislike the poems? Let me know. Oh, and uh, of course, if you have any questions, suggestions please let me know thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys later peace